We do a lot of deep dives into topics related to buying a home on this channel, but today we are going to zoom way out, take a bird's eye view, and look at the entire process of buying a home. Buying a home is a lengthy process that's got a lot of steps. So if you're hoping to buy a home this year, or if buying a home is a someday goal for you, there's no time like the present to get yourself acquainted with them because you know, you're probably going to come across these different things that you need to do or words that people expect you to know. And if it's your first time buying a home, you aren't necessarily going to know what they're talking about. So let's dive in. First up, put down your phone. Yes. Looking at houses is absolutely the fun part, but we are not up to that part yet. Before you start considering different homes or contacting a real estate agent, you want to make sure that your metaphorical financial house is in order. So that means pretty basic stuff like checking your credit score, if it could use some work, taking steps to build your credit, looking at your overall budget. What kind of debts are you paying? What income do you have coming in? You know, what's your, ca what's your cash flow situation and comparing your debt to your income because you're really looking to figure out how much house you can afford. That might not be the same number as how much a lender is willing to let you borrow. Your mortgage payment needs to be something that's gonna fit into your life. Another thing that you're gonna to wanna to figure out is how much you wanna save up for a down payment. Down payment can be the biggest hurdle to buying a home because people need to save up a decent sized chunk of money and that could take months, it could take years depending. Pro tip, we actually have a whole video on how much is a good amount to put down for a down payment. It goes into everything that you would wanna know about that. There's some fun stuff that you can do early on too. Think about what kind of home you're looking for. Are you looking for a condo? Are you looking for like a detached single family home? Is a townhouse right for you? And also things like, you know, how many bedrooms do you want? What kind of neighborhood? Are the area schools important to you? What would your commute be like? These are things that it's worthwhile to put some thought into and figure out what's a must have and a need to have when you're still kind of detached from the process of actually searching for a home, let alone making offers on them, and you've got a clear head about everything. Also in the clear head department, think through, do you wanna do this? Are you really ready to buy a home? And just kind of check in with yourself. If you're you know, ready to settle down and put down some roots, that's awesome. But if you're just tired of being like the one person in your friend group who's still renting, that might not be as compelling of a reason to make this massive financial decision. But let's jump ahead and assume that you've got your finances in order and you are ready to start the home buying process. The first thing that you're gonna wanna do is figure out what kind of mortgage you actually want. When people say mortgage, the usual assumption is they mean a 30 year conventional loan. That's the most common type of home loan in the United States, but there are different loan terms that you can consider. If you have other priorities, you might go with a 20 year loan, you might go with a 15 year loan. Fixed rate versus adjustable rate is another question to consider. Depending on what's going on with mortgage rates when you're buying, an adjustable rate loan might be more attractive than a fixed rate loan or vice versa. Either way, know that whatever you pick, you aren't stuck with it for life, you're just stuck with it until you decide to refinance. There are also different types of mortgages that can work if you are a certain type of buyer or you have a certain kind of thing that you want. So there are FHA loans, which are backed by the Federal Housing Administration. Those are designed for buyers who've had credit challenges and who might have a little bit more trouble saving up a large down payment. If you've served in the US Armed Forces, you're likely eligible for a VA loan, which is backed by the Department of Veterans Affairs. These offer incentives, including a 0% down payment. So yes, with a VA loan, if you qualify, your down payment could be zero. Once you know what kind of mortgage you're looking for, you can start looking at mortgage lenders. So this is a whole other area to consider. There are a lot of different types of lenders, everything from, you know, your brick and mortar banks and credit unions that you could go to in person to um, these online only non-bank lenders that you might be familiar with from seeing ads on TV or stuff like that, uh, who are very focused on technology and having an app that has a lot of features and stuff like that. So kind of depending on what you're looking for from a lender, what kind of experience you want, if you're more hands-on or hands-off, and also what kinds of loans they offer or what kinds of loans they specialize in, that's gonna give you different options. And you're gonna to wanna to keep your options open and apply for mortgage pre-approval with multiple lenders. That's also because lenders are likely going to offer you 
different terms, different interest rates, and even qualify you to borrow different amounts, even though you're the same person <laughs> just applying to different lenders. So you never know, and it's giving you a chance to test drive different lenders. Once you have a mortgage pre-approval though, that's something that's really helpful to have in hand because you can take it and show real estate agents and home sellers, hey, I've got this, I'm a serious buyer. Look, like a lender is willing to lend me this amount of money. So if I make you an offer on your house, I'm good for it. Now you're ready to find a real estate agent and you're going to want to take a little bit of time to find someone who works well with you because this could be a potentially lengthy home search depending on your market. If you're wondering how would you know who's a good real estate agent or what would you even ask them? We've also got a video on that. Once you've got an agent, okay, let's do this. You are ready to start looking at houses. And I don't mean just like scrolling past them on your phone, you can actually legit go look at houses because you're ready to potentially start making offers. And we say offers because it's been a really competitive market in most of the country. So don't necessarily expect that the very first house that you see and that you like enough to put in an offer on, your offer is necessarily going to be accepted. You might need to put in an offer, go through that whole process, get turned down and then have to dust yourself off and keep going again a couple of times before your offer is accepted. But then once you've got your offer accepted, yes, awesome, okay, congratulations. But now kind of a really weird time is going to start where it feels like everything is moving really fast and at the same time, incredibly slowly. And that's because you're going to apply for a mortgage and then go into underwriting. So there's a lot that goes on during this time. It can stretch easily 30, even 45 days. And it starts with you actually applying for a mortgage. Probably you're going to apply with one of the lenders that you chose from your pre-approval. You might, if you want, apply with more than one lender if you are really serious about making sure that you can compare all of the different things that you're being offered or even try to negotiate and kind of pit them against each other to fight it out for your business, you might apply to more than one lender. Either way, you are going to go through that process, get your mortgage application all the way in, and then the application is going to head to underwriting. So this is where it's with the lender and they are crossing the I's. No, they are crossing their T's dotting their eyes, checking every little thing about your financial history. And this can feel a little weird and sometimes kind of invasive because they will triple check everything. Things that you think you sent them already, you'll end up having to send them again. That birthday check that your great aunt sent you, they are going to want an explanation of where that $15 came from if they see it in your checking account. There are just a lot of details to it and you kind of just have to like grin and bear it and do your best to whenever the lender is asking you for something, get it to them as quickly as you can. Other things that are going to happen during this period include uh, getting the home appraised. So your lender will order an appraisal and that's basically to ensure that the amount that they are letting you borrow for the home, the home is actually worth that much. And so it's a good investment for everybody you are going to want to get a home inspection and that is for your peace of mind that you're buying a home that isn't going to need a ton of repairs or you know has major things wrong with it that you didn't realize when you were looking at it you will get homeowners insurance lenders usually require you to have homeowners insurance and that kind of can feel weird because you're like wait i don't own the home yet don't worry it might not make sense but this is like a normal order of doing things so having homeowner's insurance is usually one of the requirements for closing the loan. So if you're ever gonna get out of underwriting, you're gonna need a homeowner's policy. Something else that happens during this time is the title search. This is just to make sure that no one else can ever just show up at your home and be like, guess what? This is my house. Uh, also that there aren't any tax judgments or liens or anything against the house. Depending on what state you're in, you might be required to have a real estate attorney to help out with this stuff. It varies, but it's just something else that goes on during this process. Again, it's arduous. It's not the most fun. You feel like you're waiting forever and then you're doing things really quickly, but 
once you get through it, you're headed to closing and now you are really in the last final home stretch. There are a few last steps that you're gonna to wanna to take care of beforehand. One, you're gonna to wanna to look over the closing disclosure that the lender sells you. This is an updated version of the paperwork that you got when you applied for the mortgage. But now instead of being like here, we're kind of estimating what we think these costs are gonna be. Since everything's already happened, they're gonna tell you what the costs actually were. You need to know this so that you have all of your closing costs ready to go. Usually your closing costs are paid by a wire transfer or a cashier's check. So all that money needs to be in an account where it's ready to go and you can do what you need to do when you need to do it. If you're curious about what closing costs are and how much they might cost you, you know the drill. We've got a video for that. On the day of closing, you'll usually do a walkthrough of the home one last time with your agent. And then eventually you'll go to an office, sign a ton of papers, fork over that cash, and then you've done it. You've got the keys and you're a homeowner. If you've made it this far in this video, you're extremely aware that buying a home is a really lengthy process and that there are often parts of it that you can't really control. Something that can maybe help you regain a little bit of control and feel a little bit better is if there are things you can get done in advance and you've got time on your hands to do them, just go ahead and, you know, jump a few steps ahead and take care of them now. So for example, getting your financial documents in order and having everything in one place so that when a lender requests them, you've just got everything already ready to go. Or researching and looking for home inspectors when you don't need one, when it's not the heat of the moment and you're just gonna call the first person who comes up on a search engine. Just remember the whole time that you're going through all of this, everyone that you know who already owns a home had to go through a really similar process and you are not alone in this. I'm Kate Wood and I write about mortgages and home buying for NerdWallet. If you're curious about any topic that this video touched on, head to our website for articles and tools that will help you through every part of the home buying process. While you're here, like and subscribe for more.